I've been growing pumpkins and squash in the kitchen for about the last month and I don't think I've given you a progress update. So why don't I go ahead and do that now? Let's start off with the spaghetti squash. You can see that I planted them up in these little pots on the 27th of March. It's now the 23rd of April. And that's how these three little plants are doing. They're okay, they need to be potted on. Which is what I did with these two specimens here. These are also spaghetti squash. And you can see that they are fairly happy. A much bigger plant. And they're looking pretty good. So I need to get these three in bigger pots. The spaghetti squash, they're doing pretty good. Now we've shifted across to the Atlantic Giant Pumpkins. Now I know that one there doesn't look brilliant, but I've learned. I've learned through my mistakes trying to grow this one. And this one just seemed a little bit stunted, but you can see that the true leaf is in the center there and it's finally having a go. But yeah, this one germinated first before the spaghetti squash and before the other squash I'm going to show you and I was foolish basically when it came to uh, starting this one off I just chucked him outside put him out in the midday sun as you can see he didn't like it started to dry up I since brought him back indoors and when I do put him outside I put him outside in the shade and he does prefer that and is making a slow comeback so I learned not to do that with those spaghetti squash and as you can see they are far healthier than the uh, pumpkin at the moment but the pumpkin is making a comeback like I said I still got that one to fall back on if this one doesn't make it up next we're having a look at the honey boat squash planted out on the 27th of March just like the spaghetti squash as you can see they're doing fairly well they do need to be potted up which I will do I grew these last year they were fantastic and uh, as such they convinced me to have another go at them if you've not tried honey boat squash please do give them a go if you like sweet flavoured squash. They almost taste like um, sweet potato, which was the main reason I bought them. And yeah, you'll like these. So there we go. I planted out six seeds. Only three germinated, but I've got enough here to have a go at this year. Okay, we're looking at two courgette plants. Also planted out on the 27th of March doing okay. I haven't gone crazy with the courgettes because you only really need one plant because they pump out so many fruit it's unbelievable. So I think two will do me this year. But they're looking okay. And finally three butternut squash plants. Not in tip-top condition but they will survive, I'm sure of it. And again, if you want long storage winter crops, grow yourself a butternut squash. They're really good doers as well. They do pump out quite a few fruit once they establish and get going. So there you have it, a smorgasbord of delights here on the kitchen counter mainly squash and a couple of Atlantic giant pumpkins. Now then, yesterday I took a punt. I went to a local garden centre of mine just to see if it was open. And it was, and it was open to the public. And the public were actually shopping at this garden centre. Everybody was maintaining their two metre um, 
distant from everybody else so everybody was being vigilant and aware and uh, careful but yeah it uh, the garden center was open which gave me an opportunity to bag one single solitary seed potato they were giving seed potatoes away because um, basically they'd all started to chit, started to go a bit bad and they just wanted rid of them. I took one, that's all I wanted, and it was for free. And this variety is called Yukon Gold. I've never grown it before. I'm certain I've seen it on videos, probably on your videos. And uh, yeah, so I thought I'd give this one potato a chance at life and uh, yeah, we'll see how many Yukon Gold spuds I get from this one. Talking of spuds, this leads me on nicely to the next section of this video. I planted the potatoes out a couple of weeks ago in these pots. These are the mine rows. Another tub of mine rows. And in this potato bag here, we can just see the rocket's uh, broken surface of the compost. I need to top this bag up. All right, let's move over to this side of the garden, slightly shadier over here. Three pots, all containing rocket potatoes. Just broken the surface of the soil there. I need to top those up a little bit. Moving across. Potato bag, potato bag, and yet another potato bag, all again containing rocket potatoes and all needing topping up with more compost. So the potatoes are doing pretty well. I'll just add a bit more compost to this tub. There we go, that will give the potatoes a bit more feed and I'll water it in. Let's do the same for this bag of rocket potatoes. Just top it up with compost, like so. We'll leave that alone now and just wait for the potatoes to break the surface of the compost and grow on. Right, back in the kitchen. If you are growing your potatoes in pots or bags like I am, do remember to keep them well watered as they will tend to dry out more so than if you're growing potatoes in the ground, say. Anyhow, let's move on to this. I don't know if I'll be able to get it in shot. There we go. Some of you may know what this is already. I know that some of you definitely have one of these in your allotment or in your back garden. Glow artichoke. There we go. I did try and grow one of these myself a couple of years back on allotment grow how. Um, it did okay for about three or four months and then died. I don't know what happened. Probably me is what happened. I don't know. Maybe I didn't give it enough TLC. But I picked this up at that garden centre and uh, yeah, it looks fairly strong, fairly healthy. I'm going to plant it out and uh, yeah, just see, see how it gets on this season. But probably next season it will come into its own. And uh, yeah, I'm just growing this mainly for the bees because the flower heads are fantastic. I have no kind of like inclination to actually eat 
the flower segments themselves when they start to form. This is purely for the bees. I've been growing some sweet peas as well, as you may remember from a previous video. Here we go. This is how many germinated from this particular pot. I've pinched out the growing tips. These need to be planted up at the allotment. That's pot number one. And then pot number two down here. There we go. They're all doing pretty well. They just need to be planted out, like I said, against the trellis. Something they can climb up. And I've got that chicken wire trellis up at the uh, allotment. And they always do well against that. There we go. Sweet peas. And finally, a magnificent tray of little gem lettuce. I planted about, I don't know, 50 seeds into this. As you can see, one, two, three, four, only six germinated. And they are pretty weedy at that. But they are going to be planted out. And uh, yeah, they'll be given a chance. A pop of blot. Well, I think that's it for this video. All bases have been covered. We looked at the pumpkins, the squash, the potatoes, and a few other frilly things in between. Anyway, thank you for joining me if you have. Remember to hit that like button, share, subscribe, but most importantly, please do comment down below. And until the next video, bye for now.